of uh, tune that the volume bound the number of generators you need for the graphics. Uh, so, from one end, it's much more difficult to deal with uh, lack of crypto than in this type of problem. On the other end, I'm only restricting to bounding the generator, so it's easier task. But still, uh, this talk is a bit ambitious because I'm, I want to dedicate only this talk to this theorem. So, uh, so that's why I have to follow my notes very briefly. So, <coughs> for group for group gamma, I denote by d gamma. It's the minimal side of the generator of the set of the generator. Set. Number of generators we need, and uh, <coughs> the theorem which I'm going to prove is that uh, uh, given C, uh, given uh, G, uh, which I've always uh, said is in the center free. Assumption uh, connected leaf group. Uh, there is a constant C such that uh, the number of generators of uh, a lattice is bounded by C times the volume. So this is uh, for any semi-simple leaf group uh, and for every lattice. For any, let's say, irreducible graphics. Uh, yeah. And in general, you cannot do vector. You know that the uh, simplest example is uh, SF2R, where you simply know that the uh, number of generators is, uh, is, is going linearly with the volume. For instance, uh, for some group or for free group, if you take uh, but in the of the linear, the, the number generator is multiplied by the index. So, uh, so you cannot do better. And this is very general. And let me just, so there are several corollaries to it. So in particular, uh, it's also used for the results that you want to estimate the number of all lattices. So if you want, even if you restrict to torsion free lattices, to manifold, then, uh, okay, for most of the cases, you can use the results of homotopy type, but the results of homotopy type assume that uh, we are not in the case of SL3 and SL2 times SL2, but you still can do, you can still bound the number of manifold, but then you have to use some bound of the number of generator, but not for the, lat for the lattice itself, but for some maximal sample which contain it, and this may have torsion, so, so this is used also to count manifold. But let me indicate just uh, other uh, immediate consequences. So, corollary one is that the uh, gamma is finite for every lattice. So every lattice is finitely generated. So this was known before. Uh, this was the old conjecture of Ziegler, and it was proved uh, case by case. Galan uh, Ragunata in the rank one case, and then Kushtar uh, proved the higher rank case. So this is, uh, he proved uh, it fine property T. And uh, there's also the mixed case, uh, which is higher rank, but it's product of rank one. So, uh, but, but now we have a, let's say, an elementary or more elementary unified proof in you know, all cases, which actually avoids property T also. So this is a uh, one color. Another corollary, which you can deduce from this, is the kashtan magulis theorem. So kashtan magulis theorem says that uh, you cannot have lattices of arbitrarily small co-volume. The volume is bounded below. So this is a phenomenon of semi-simple group. Of course, in Rn, if your group is Rn, you can have a lattice of a very small volume. So, but in, in sensible simple group, you cannot have. So, so it says that, in fact, the volume of uh, G of gamma is at least uh, D of gamma over C. 
and and uh, and this is at least one or even two. You cannot have ciglic. Uh, you cannot have ciglic. Uh, so the volume will bounded be lower. So this is a Pentano Gulf theorem. Okay. So this is just to explain that also I don't know how it's for this, but uh, just uh, this is explaining why this theorem is a. Uh, or in, in another indication why this theorem is interesting. And now I want to explain the proof. So the main idea is uh, you start with a, a man, the manifold, it's S module gamma. And uh, okay, it's not a manifold and it's any model of the so ramified point, and this may look complicated. Uh, and then you want to you want to find inside the manifold a subset uh, which lays in the thick part. So it's, but it's also you want it to capture all the topology. So whenever there is a hole, so in, you want to find something. So in, the, in this in, in dimension two, you cannot do it because uh, you want it to be connected and to capture all the topology and maybe to have even more topology. But uh, but at least it is uh, it is as complicated as the manifold itself. Uh, so in dimension two there is a problem. So we will assume that uh, G is not SL two because for SL two we know this theorem anyhow. We know to represent every last every surface group and every free group. And even if you add torsion, you the explicit presentation of surface of surface group even if they have torsion. And so this is this theorem is known. Uh, and it's not hard. It's so we assume that we will assume that G is not SL2. Uh, okay, now I want to uh, given a geodesic C uh, for a geodesic C C in the S, you know uh, J of C is the uh, all the geodesics which are parallel to C, but the, the traces of the geodesic. So, so it's, uh, if you want, the union of all C prime of R, such that C prime is parallel to C. So if you're in rank one, it's just the trace of C. There's no, there's no parallel geodesic. But in high rank, you may have parallel geodesic, maybe a flat, not a geodesic, Plan or higher dimensional flat space, but it can also be something which is not flat, uh, but it has a Euclidean factor. So this is a just a notation, and uh, and then we want to estimate the dimension of this. So lemma uh, the co-dimension of C of J of C. Uh, you want the co of the, the dimension of S minus the dimension of J of C, this is the co-dimension of it, is equal to the co-dimension of some parabolic subgroup, so the dimension of G mod P. Well, P is the parabolic circle corresponding to uh, the point C of infinity. So it's the, the step. This one P is the stabilizer of the point infinity. If you want that, uh, you can use this as a definition of a parabolic sandwich. A parabolic sandwich is a stabilizer of points in three. And uh, it's minimal parabolic if this point is regular, and otherwise it's not minimal. So the several way to define parabolic sandwich, I assume that you know what everybody knows what it's a parabolic sandwich. Yeah, so, so this is a... So this union of C is going to supply of Sorry? Is GSC is going to supply it? Yeah, it's a totally geodesic sub-manifold. Uh, and uh, it's actually a sub-symmetric space 
but it will always have a Euclidean factor. It won't be of no, of no proper type. And the factor will correspond to the direction of C. So it will be, yeah. For instance, it could be of the form hyperbolic plane cross R. Inside the symmetric space of SL3, you can find such a geodesic such that the, all the parallel to it are, are uh, parameters by some hyperbolic plane. So this is what will happen if you take the geodesic corresponding to a matrix of this form inside SL2R. Yeah. Okay. And uh, why, why this lemma is true? So, uh, the proof, pick a point x in uh, C, in geodesic, and uh, <coughs> now note that uh, uh, P minus, P minus is the opposite power so P minus, let's see, note that P minus, the stabilizer of the uh, of the uh, minus, it's the opposite power point. So P minus uh, X is everything. Every parabolic subgroup actually acts transitively on this point. That's a, uh, this is, well, no, this is uh, one of the decomposition, uh, uh, yeah, this is well known. So, so this is everything. And uh, now I claim that uh, for uh, G inside T minus, GX belongs to J if and only if uh, G belongs to P cross. This is my claim. If I start with G with T minus, then when I translate x, I stay in the, this parallel uh, thing, if and only if, I mean t plus. Uh, and why is that? So if I'm in p, if I'm in p plus, then uh, it's clear because I, I, if I preserve both ends of the geodetic, I, I go to a parallel geodetic. And so, okay, if, if G belongs to P plus and P minus, then uh, G of C infinity is C infinity, and G of C minus infinity is C minus infinity. Hence, hence uh, G of C, uh, G of C, Take C is parallel to C, and 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 we are in J. Okay, what happens if we just know that G of X is in J? Uh, on the other hand, if G of X is inside the parallel, uh, the, the space, the the set of, of all parallel geodesic, then we look at the, the ray that go backwards to backwards in time. So through this point, there is a unique geodesic that start, there is a unique geodesic that starts at GX and go to C minus infinity. Right? But we know what is this geodesic. It's the geodesic that's parallel to my original geodesic. Because because this in yeah, so it must be the same here. So there is a unique uh, geodesic, uh, let's say C prime, such that C prime of zero is G of X, and C prime of minus infinity is, uh, is C of minus infinity. And we know that the parallel geodesic through the there is a parallel geodesic, and we know it satisfies. And we know that, it, that the parallel one, that the parallel one satisfies. So what is the parallel? It's just the geodesic 
G of the parallel one is uh, G of six. Uh, okay, sorry, the parallel one. Uh, so, so, okay, so, and G of C also for. So, G C is parallel. G C satisfies this, and, and there is only one that satisfies this, and this must be the parallel one. So, okay, so let's finish this, this claim. But now we know P acts transitively. So, so we know that uh, co dimension of J of C inside S is the same as uh, P minus is the dimension of P minus divided by P minus intersects transitively. Because you act transitively so you reach everywhere, but you stay inside Yeah. And this, okay, now, now you know that. So this is the same as the dimension of P minus P plus over P plus. Now P minus P plus is open in G because of what composition. This is the dimension of G. Okay, so this, this is the fast food proof of this composition. Uh, yeah. It's, what, what is the color of the composition? We know that the, if J of C, the color is that if if J of if uh, if G is not a PSL two how then a co-dimension J of C is at least is bigger than one at least <coughs> at least for, if J is simple and it's not SL two R because well, the only group that has a parabolic subgroup of co-dimension one is SL2. Uh, if you want, it's a whole theorem of Lee that the SL2R is the only uh, linear Lee group that acts on the circle. And if, you, if it acts on one dimension, G of P is one dimension, it's a circle. Okay. okay. So, so this, so we are not, so this explain why if we are not in the SL2R case, okay, this is what I mentioned at least. Okay. So I'm I'm going to explain the proof. And as I said that the proof of this theory in one hand is, is much more simpler than the theorem of the homotopy, we need to be much less careful. But still, I want to do it uh, precisely, so it's I have to follow the instructions. So, so let uh, epsilon g be the Mongolian sponsor. From the Mongolian lemma, uh, mg uh, is the Mongolian index. But in the in the uh, mg the Margulis index. But what do I mean by index? I mean that if you have a group which generated by small m, m and with small displacement, then I said that it has a subgroup of this index, which blah blah blah, which is botanically important for them. But I want the subgroup also to be normal. In the proof of Margulis lemma, I didn't insist that it's normal. Now I want it to be normal. It's a half better. But it's not, uh, it's okay, because I can, if you have some group of index M, then I have some group of index uh, uh, M factorial, which is normal, right? So, so the, uh, in the Maguri level, we want the, the, the final index sum to be normal. That's what I mean. Okay, and now, now the real concept I'm using is epsilon is, uh, will be just epsilon g over 2, 
and uh, uh, M, still I want it to be MG per Sawyer, just, uh, and then I, I need a, another constant, uh, let's call it uh, new, be M to the knee, okay, I have to, this has to be final. What is M to the knee? So here is a lemma <coughs> which will define this uh, uh, no. So there exists a constant no such that for any ascending, for any ascending. A sequence of normalizer, okay, of centralizer, a centralizer of one element contained in a centralizer of another element contained, contained in the centralizer of this element. And the sending sequence, then it cannot always go. There is i less than n such that on the i place there is equality of g i is the same as the centralizer of g i. This lemma is pretty obvious. Why? Because g has finite dimension, and uh, these are closed subgroup. Uh, Actually, they are not con they are not connected, but uh, not necessarily connected. But you can bound uh, you can bound the numbers to connect a component of such a group. I, I don't want to write the proof for it. You can look in my paper, but it's it's really it's it's not how the, the number of connected components is bounded because uh, the way these groups are uh, defined. It, to be a centralizer means you satisfy, suppose you are inside, G is inside SLD. So to be a centralizer of an element, you, you satisfy D square uh, quadratic equation. And now you can use uh, the zoo theorem to tell you that if you have a variety, which is projective variety, you can put it in a projective variety. If you have a projective variety, which is defined by uh, D square, uh, uh, quadratic equation, then the, the number of connected component of uh, irreducible component is bounded uh, explicitly. And uh, so this is a so, so this is a not so, not hard, yet. but uh, this is what I need to define this new, and uh, then I make M to be uh, <coughs> I'm I'm soon going to explain. I just okay, you have to do something. So, uh, given semi-simple element, given G, G semi-simple, denote uh, let J of G be the minimal, uh, J of G bigger than zero and less than N, be the minimal Integer such that a centralizer of G M to the J is equal to the centralizer of G M to the J plus one. This is how I define J. A um, and set now gamma bar is gamma to the power m uh, to the power j of gamma if gamma is hyperbolic. And gamma bar equals gamma otherwise. 
So now, now I have the group gamma, which is a lattice. All the constants are independent of gamma. And now, for any element, if it's parabolic or elliptic, I leave it as it is. But if it's uh, hyperbolic, I replace it by a bounded power. And the reason I do it is that I want that when I work with an element, I can look at its m power, and they will have the same centralized. Uh, so the centralizer of an element determines uh, determines what is the set of uh, geodesic of the element. So it's, it's a, if two element, uh, you know, if if I look at the some element can be some electric group of unity and then the satellite the air power can be added. Yes, I have found the yeah, 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 yeah. I, but not for hyperbolic. Not for hyperbolic. Okay, okay. Yeah. So note that if gamma is hyperbolic, then the mean set of gamma sets where it attains the minimum displacement. So it is that the union of all geodesics of gamma is the same as the mean set of gamma. <coughs> This this is a if you if you study this is what basic thing in, in the symmetric space. I don't want to yeah. But this this is what this is this will be used in the proof. Uh, you will not see where I'm using it, I think. But uh, yeah. um, okay. Now now I'm going to tell you the proof. So we suppose. that G is not PSL2R. This proof is not for this case, but for this case, we know by gauss one And then we define a N tilde to be, so this is a subset of the symmetric space, the union of all mean gamma bar such that gamma is in gamma, which is but not identity, and the infimum of the displacement of gamma is less than x. So, in a sense, you want to throw out, remove all the fixed points. So, if gamma is elliptic, gamma bar is gamma, and I have chosen the fixed point of every elliptic, and I also throw the set of geodesic, the set of axes of every, sorry, you know, of every uh, hyperbolic with very small displacement. So I throw it out. By the way, what, for denoting uh, denoting uh, subsets of the symmetric space, I will use tilde. When I use tilde, I mean that it's a cover of a subset in the in the manifold, in the obifold. And it, it's just a mean that it's set in gamma in pi. And uh, so if I denote by this, then n is inside m. And m is just s monica, uh, n, n tilde monica. I, I always use this notation when I. But note that, no doubt. That uh, co-dimension in S of n tilde is at least two, because I'm not in S or two out. So when I throw the the the, X, the set of axes of all, uh, of, if I fix a hyperbolic element and look at the set of its axes, it's contained in the set of all parallel geodesic to to one. The, all the axes are, are parallel, so it's the co-dimension of this. Similarly, if I take an elliptic element, then it fixes a totally geodesic subspace, and the subspace cannot be of co-dimension one. Because if it's of co-dimension one, it means that I'm reflecting with the subspace, but then I'm, I don't preserve the orientation, but G is connected, then the element of G preserves the orientation, so, so also for, fit, for the elliptic, this would be. But, and this implies 
So if you want acid smooth, strictly decreasing on zero epsilon and F x f is equal to epsilon a equal to zero on a epsilon c. Epsilon. Oh. So this is a this is my function. It's easy to, to write find such a function. And this fa with this function we define c psi the point X will be a sum over all gamma, but I want not all gamma, I just want gamma that the displacement of gamma somewhere is less than epsilon. And what I'm summing F D bar. So this is the function. So if you ignore for the bar for a moment, this bar, this bar. So this is a function that that uh, when f vanish, it means that if f vanish, it means at x, it means that the displacement of every element in x is at least epsilon. So I mean the thick part. And I want to flow, I want to say that psi will define a flow to the place where it's, it's vanished. You can flow from, you, from s minus n to where psi vanish. That's what I want, that's what I will really do. And this, where, where it vanish, it will be in the thick part, the manifold. So, okay, and, and the bar, okay, because the bar is just correction that I need. But because the bar, okay, I give more weight to elliptic, but, uh, but it's, it still it doesn't change. So, let me just try this. Oh, uh, maybe I want to, this I, I will skip. Actually, you don't really need to remember. It's some constant that when you check the proof of details, you, you need, but uh, now you will believe me. Uh, so, so, note that, this is what I said, note that.
this is the main proposition. Is that the psi is smooth and the gradient of psi? So, by the way, I didn't say why psi is well defined, because you see I'm summing over an infinite set. But at any point, I'm summing only of a finite set. Because the, the elements that contribute are elements with small displacement. If you have large displacements, f is zero. So, so only elements with small displacement. Gamma is discrete, so for at any point, there are only five in many contributions. So it's well defined, and gradient psi is zero at x, if and only if, psi of x. This is the main. So the gradient is non zero everywhere outside this set. Moreover, psi is proper. Program map. Uh, okay. Uh, so it, mean, it means that the pre image of a compact set is compact. And this, uh, this also follows from the speakers of gamma uh, and the fact that uh, you see that. Okay, I don't want to elaborate this. It's, if you think about it, it will provide it easier. And uh, okay, so what is the consequence of this theorem? The consequence of the main proposition. I, I will I will explain the proof, but before that, let me explain why this implies the main theorem. So first, it implies this for any delta bigger than zero. Uh, there is a deformation retract ancient retract from M minus N to uh, the set where uh, let me write it as I write to the set psi less than equal delta. Is it clear what I mean here? Uh, oh, uh, this is notation that I, I will mean, use. Psi less than equal delta is by definition the set of x where psi of x is less than equal delta. Similar to how we define thick part, thin part. So there is a deformation retract from m minus n to d. Why? This is just the basic Morse lemma for most theory. If you this is because this is the most most function proof by the proposition uh, psi is the most function. Uh, so psi is uh, so, so there's no singular points. That, that's that's it. You, you know what is the, the, the main the first lemma of Morse in, in Morse, when you study Morse theory is that if you have a manifold you have a function and you have two sublevel sets of the function and the gradient is non-zero between them at any point then you can there is a deformation retract from one to another and this is exactly what it says so this by the proposition uh, gradient psi is not zero. Uh, on uh, psi greater than delta <coughs> hence the theorem follow from Morse left so sh should I write Morse lemma or tell me the theorem follow from should I write it? Uh, so I, I call this most lemma, you know, in, in geometric group theory, people call most lemma the fact that uh, every quasi geodesic in hyperbolic 
symmetric phases. There are several <coughs> things that are called, they are related, but are called Most Lemma. Yeah, this is the most basic lemma in most theorems. So, uh, okay, yeah, this is most lemma. Yeah. So, in particular, in particular, uh, let's just write one corollary. Uh, corollary, psi less than delta is compact, non-empty. Compact is clear, uh, if you think about it, because the injectivity values here is bounded below. But it's non-empty. Uh, for every delta, uh, being even equals zero. To the case delta equals zero, I cannot have the formation retract because I cannot do the most. Uh, ah, yeah. To apply most, to apply most lemma, you need this. You need that the gradient is not zero also on the sublevel. That's that's actually a crucial point. So you cannot do the formation retract to delta equals zero, but you can do the formation retract for every positive delta. So, but once you know that for every positive delta, this set is not empty. Then they take intersection of all of them, and you see that also for psi, where psi vanish, it's not empty. Because it's intersection of non empty compact sets, which are containing one and another, so the, the limit is also. And this is actually a Dalmogulis theorem. It tells you that there is a point where the injectivity radius is, is, is uh, bigger than something. Because we said that where delta equals zero, the injectivity radius is at least epsilon over two yeah. two. yeah. So, so this this uh, this implies uh, the stronger version of the standard weight. Okay. So uh, uh, this is just telling out. <coughs> and now I'm going to tell you how to finish the proof. Uh, of the theorems, I want to bound the number of generators. So I have I have a set. So let, let's call it by name. Let y be the set at psi equal zero. And we recall that y is contained in the thick part, call it m alpha, where alpha is the constant. Uh, Epsilon over two mu, some constant. <coughs> so psi is contained here. So and uh, <coughs> and uh, so let let uh, f be. I'm, I'm doing the good cover argument. Be a uh, and uh, uh, an alpha, uh, um, a maximal alpha district, maximal alpha district subset of a uh, one. Just pick a discrete subset. So. You see, y could be much more complicated than m, but they don't care. It lays inside the thick part, and I can do the good covering argument, maybe not on y, but on the network as well. So uh, let uh, u be the union over all p in f, it's a finite union, of the ball of radius alpha around So U contain a contain Y. Maybe it's bigger, it's really bigger, and it's open. <coughs> and it's also U even contain a neighborhood of Y. So it's also contain U actually contain something bigger, so it contain psi less than delta. For small, for small volume. Because this converge, yeah. For small delta, it just contains. But 
you is a, you admit uh, a good cover uh, like we have. So we know that. Uh, uh, so this implies first that u tilde is connected. Why? Because. So, okay, we, we actually know that uh, here we connected because uh, since psi less than delta tilde is connected. And from any point in U, I can, I can move inside one ball to be in Y. So, inside, so from any point in U, I can move to psi less than equal even zero. So, so, so I get the connect. So it means that u tilde is connected. So u tilde is some. It goes everywhere in. Okay. <clears throat> and now I claim. Okay. Gamma acts freely on u tilde because uh, you because it's. When when the gamma has fixed point only in the ramified in the in singular set, and this singular set is far away, so here I got three and I'm connected. This for coming theorem tells us gamma is a portion of the fundamental root of a uh, U. You know, yeah, you know that if gamma acts freely on some uh, simply connected space, then gamma is the fundamental group of the quotient. If it acts non freely, then it's a quotient of the fundamental group of the quotient. So we, the kernel will be the fundamental group of U tilde. The kernel of, so, so this is well known, right? From Kaplan. But this, we know that, uh, we know that. That uh, I want you is generated by small number of generators by uh, so so you by definition is a good cover. So for good cover, we know to compute the fundamental group generated by uh, at most uh, some constant time volume u. Uh, this is at most. So, so this proves the theorem. Modulo the main proposition. So I, I, let me just explain what we did. So we started with the manifold. So M was S mod gamma. So it's not a manifold, it's an orbifold. And we want to estimate the number of generators of gamma. Gamma acts on S non free. If we find a connected subset of S, on which gamma acts freely, we, we found a u tilde inside S connected, on which gamma acts freely. But then gamma of the fundamental group of u tilde mod gamma. And then, so if you want, you, you have exact sequence here where the theory of the fundamental group of u tilde. <coughs> and what is u tilde mod gamma? The, 
So the way we found this, you two in our camera was you. We found you when we linked it to you, Tilda. You, Tilda Montgama, is you. And this is given by a good cover. It's a union of P in F of ball of radius alpha on P. And this is a good cover. When you have a good cover, the name of the cover uh, at the same fundamental group as a space, and uh, we can control the number two. For this, we can control everything, not just the number of generator or the number of relation, eh? but this will not pass to gamma. For gamma, if we have quotient, the number of generator of the quotient is at most the number of generator of what we start with. So, generator pass to generator. So, this, so this is basically what we, we do. And all we need to prove is the main proposition. And uh, you remember that this, uh, this uh, function was, was defined, uh, this, we have a single function. So that's, uh, that's what makes life easy, easier. <coughs> so now I want to prove the main proposition. So I explained. Stay the proof. Uh, yeah. So in this case, if the uh, gamma x is p, then your the u is going to be m. The, the radical and the good cover. No, 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 no. Even if no, no, no. I mean, no, no. This okay. Oh, in in addition, uh, so so the, the fact that u was uh, admitted such a good cover is because it's in where the utility analysis is safe. So even for a free action, you're just this legend to get Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Along the way, at some point I said, this already proves the stack on bullies. Somewhere okay. uh, here. Somewhere here I said that this implies the stack on bullies. This is already a non-trivial step to show that there is a thick part. Yeah. But here I found a thick part. And I also proved that the thick part is connected. And not just connected, also in the universal cup of it is connected. <laughs> because the thick part was a deformation retract of connected submanifold, which the connected submanifold was the full manifold after I throw some something of two dimension. Yeah. Your choice of alpha is such that the ramification points are are actually in the thin part. No, uh, by defi yeah, by definition, the ramification point uh, will be in the uh, in the singular set. In the singular set was yeah. The reason I choose this alpha, the reason I chose this constants, uh, mu, alpha, all this, is that it, it all it all comes from the fact that uh, I have to go, I have to. Uh, when you prove the proposition, of course, you want to prove that the, the gradient is not zero. The only data that you have is Margulis lemma, and but Margulis lemma tells you that something after you take finite index, we have to take powers of elements. And this is why things get complicated because if you take an element and get, take its power, then it perhaps it has more access, more as more singular. So this is why you have to play with the parameter. This is why this is what makes the proof a bit more technical. So we have to change the constant, uh, make correction. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's a still a relatively short proof. You can look in my paper. Uh, it's, it's really only a few pages. <coughs> and, uh, and now, um, now I'm going to prove the proposition. So I want to show that the gradient is not zero. How, how are you going to show that thing? How to prove the proposition? Show that the gradient is not 
of zero. So, so how do you do it? So here is your simple lemma. Suppose that A in S is convex. And uh, C is a geodetic ray. Such that the projection to A, the projection to nearest point of C, of C of everything, uh, zero infinity, is uh, exactly C of zero. You see, I have, I have a set, A, and I have a geodetic that starts on its boundary and is going away. And it's projected to this point. Then, uh, let's call it H of T. It's the displacement. Ah, more. Suppose G is an isometry which fits A. Standard, not fits, but standardized A. Then, <coughs> then uh, uh, the function, the displacement function, which is a uh, dg uh, of c of t, is non decreasing. So what does it mean? Yeah. What does it mean? It means that uh, if uh, alpha and beta commute, or let's call them by other name, uh, gamma 1 and gamma 2 uh, commute, <coughs> and uh, this place 
displacement function of gamma 1 less than a is non empty, and displacement function gamma 2 less than b is non empty, then they intersect. Let's just uh, that's that's a lemma, and you can do it with more. If it's, it's true not just for two elements, but also for any finite set of elements. In fact, what you should say, in fact, if you have a set which is invariant under an isometry, then you need to intersect every sublevel set of that isometry. So maybe let's just write this more general. So let me write, let me actually write a more general lemma, which implies the problem. So this one, if A is convex and a gamma invariant, or gamma is an isometry, then uh, n uh, d gamma less than a is non empty, then d gamma less than a intersects this. And, and why is that? Here's the proof. So look at a. Suppose you find a point x such that d gamma of x is, uh, is less than a. So what is d gamma of x? It means the distance between x and a gamma x. This is less than a. So this is x, and here is gamma x. This is less than a. Now we can project it. Projection of x. And this is the projection of a uh, gamma x. <coughs> and the, the, the proof follows from the fact that P is one leaf sheet, it's, non in, it's a distance non increases So it's, it's one leaf, it's contraction. Projection of convex set is non increasing distance. And a uh, commute with gamma. Because gamma preserves A, it, it commutes with this projection term. And, that, and that's all. You see the. So, 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 so PA of gamma X is the same as gamma of P. A of X, and now you compute the displacement of the displacement of gamma at P A of X is the same is, is the distance between uh, P A of X and gamma P A of X, and this is the same as the uh, distance between, as uh, this is smaller, uh, as, no, this is, uh, wait, this is the same as distance between P A of X and P A of gamma X. And this is smaller than the distance between X and gamma X, which is the displacement. Just a long equation, but inequality, but it's, uh, that's it. And now why it implies the previous lemma? Because if, if gamma 1 commutes with gamma 2, then the sub-level says <coughs> the previous level follow. follows since uh, 
d beta and d gamma 2 is gamma 1 invariant. If two elements commute, then the displacement uh, hints why that d gamma 2 of gamma 1 x is the same as the distance between gamma 2, gamma 1 x and gamma 1 x and is the same as the distance between gamma 1, gamma 2 x, x and gamma 1 x and it's the same as the distance between gamma 2 x and x which is the displacement so the d gamma 2 is gamma 1 invariant and hence also it's sublevel hence also it's sublevel okay so this proves this <coughs> and this is what I'm going to use I mean, these two lemmas, the one that, this lemma tells me what, how can I could guarantee that some derivative is not zero, and this lemma tells me that something else, and, uh, and the proof of the composition, <coughs> so let me just uh, recall. What was psi? Recall that psi tilde of x was sum uh, of all sum of all okay something of uh, uh, f of d bar gamma bar x and d and gamma bar is basically gamma except that uh, for parabolic I take some bundle power and, and, and uh, d bar is basically d, the, the this displacement except that I want to give more weights to elliptic and, and parabolic I want to subtract something and uh, so we denote by <coughs> so we denote by uh, gamma x to be the set of all gamma bar such that uh, which contribute something so such that d uh, bar gamma bar of x uh, is less than epsilon and also I want the infimum uh, d gamma bar here, because here is so these are all the these are all the elements that contribute. This is the the group that contributes the element that contributes something to the sum. So this is the generating set and gamma x, which will be what is generating. Okay, and 
and we, we have to show that we have to show we need to show that the gradient by at x is not zero. So remember, that's exactly the lemma. The lemma says that if psi is not zero, then the gradient is not zero. And the function is defined on the complement of x. So that's, it. that's exactly the, the lemma. <coughs> OK. So. So there are three cases. We, we do it. Uh, there are three cases. Uh, I will write them. We split to three cases. We distinguish uh, three cases. Sorry, what was in, in Tilta was the thin part? Thin part. Uh, and th not the thin part. And Tilta was the, the singular set. It was on the red side point, on the fixed point, or the excess of a uh, of hyperbolic element with small displacement. And tilde is what we throw out of the manifold. It's all and tilde. It's a lift of the universal part of the thin part. So. Yeah. No, no. It's 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 and tilde is a floor dimension. It's, it's what we put that has four dimensions this too. So n tilde, it's, it's the union of mean gamma. It's the union of the minimal sets uh, where the displacement is small. Yeah, yeah infimum d gamma is less than x. So in particular, it contains all the ramified points, but also geodesic with some more displacement. But it projects to the thin part. It's inside the thin part. If you want, it's the center of the thin part. So in this picture, in this picture, so this is empty. Oh. The core. Yeah. Point. But if you have ramified point, you also throw them. <coughs> uh, this is N. The, you know, the cover of it. The, oh, yeah. so it's the core of the set. Yeah. OK, so the three cases are first if gamma x is finite. <coughs> Second is uh, gamma x is infinite uh, and consists of a semi simple element and consists of semi simple. And the third case is that, uh, uh, oh, by the way, in this case, you can show that gamma x is a value. Why? Let me just say. Because by Margulis' lemma, Gamma is a variant. I claim that in this case is a variant. So you have to, one has to argue a little bit, it's not hard, but 
if you are not for infinite, you know, if you need this case, then you are in this case. And this is basically clear because if your group is, if hx is, if, if, you have, if, if you have a parabolic element, then also it's, every power of it is parabolic. So you will have parabolic here. And then you do the commutator. If you, if nothing left, then you already were central. If something left, then everything is that left is unipotent, <coughs> and and you can find something in the center. Which is parabolic. So this is a in paper I wrote it what I just said, but but uh, that's the only last thing. And in each of these cases, you prove that the gradient of x is non-zero, and you do it basically the same. So I will choose one case. I will choose one case. You use the, the previous lemma that I wrote. <coughs> and let's choose, for instance, case 3. Let's explain the proof in case 3 that the other two cases are, case 1 is, is immediate. After I do case 3, you will see how to do the other thing. But uh, in fact, case 3 is the most interesting. Let's say. But when I do case 3, you will not see why I needed to take, uh, replace epsilon by alpha and take this mu and this. To see this, you have to do case two. But I will still have to do case three. So, proof of case three. So, let a sigma inside Hx be, uh, be central and powerful. Such a thing. Set A 
to be the intersection uh, of zero to k of the displacement of this lateral tangent set, sigma, this sigma i, I go to the less than or equal if you want. So this is non empty because they commute by the length. The length. The commute section of several sets is not empty. But more than A is a, A is gamma infinite. Gamma x Sigma x, uh, it's all the elements that contribute to something. 
So, uh, and, and so this is this is always negative. So this, okay, and this is always non-negative. And I have to tell you why. At least for one of them, it is strictly po <coughs> it is positive. So this is only only a few. It could be one minute. So. I claim, and this will finish the proof, claim there exists gamma bar in, gamma in, a, in sigma x such that gradient T gamma bar at x times n at x is strictly positive, it's not, not uh, equal. So it's, and why is that? Otherwise, gamma bar C will be parallel to C for every gamma bar inside sigma. If the, the if the derivative it's a all smooth function and at yeah if the derivative is it's zero then then uh, it's zero also in the past and then then it's zero all the time so it's hard. <coughs> which imply that gamma bar, gamma C parallel to C for every gamma in gamma X because these were the generators and parallelity is transitive relation. So if every generator takes me to a parallel relative, then every element is a group. But we know that sigma, our element, Sigma, uh, or if you want that, uh, we want that sigma uh, C is not parallel. Because so sigma is the display, yeah, the display of sigma uh, here is strictly smaller. That's how we should to say that. And similar way to 